Hey, what's up YouTube land? Phil here, welcome back to Playground Sessions YouTube channel. I've got another song section to teach you today and I hope you like love because this is a classic timeless love song. It's called Endless Love and it's by Lionel Richie. We're gonna be learning the intermediate level chorus. It's a long section with a lot going on, so get ready. The section we're learning today sounds like this. All right, two, set, go. Hey, there's 100%. That's always fun. And if you're not playing in the Playground Sessions app, you should be, because that 100% popped up based on my performance. It grades you as you play. It's interactive and super fun. We're doing a free trial right now, so for 30 days, you can try the app, all access, and no strings attached. You sign up for your account, and you don't have to pay up front, and you get 30 days to play and try it. On day 29, if you want to cancel, go for it. You won't get charged. So click the link in this video's description or tap that card above and go ahead and open it in a new tab because we got some work to do on this video but when we're done I want you to get started in the app you can even finish this song there all right let's get started with the right hand first I'm gonna break it down in detail for you here we go the key signature for this arrangement is two flats B flat and E flat that of course tells us we're in the key of B flat Time signature is 4-4, also known as common time, because we see this one a whole lot in all styles of music. It means four beats per measure, and the quarter note gets the beat. All right, let's talk about notes. We're gonna start on a G above middle C. Our next note's F with our third finger, then we're gonna play E flat. Tie that over to the next measure, and then we see three triplet quarter notes, right? A, B flat, C. Those three together are one bracket of triplets. That's gonna fit into the space usually that two quarter notes would fit, so we're gonna squeeze three into that two. Triplet, okay, now next measure. F with our two finger and right away, thumb on D. Tie it to an eighth note and jump back up to F. There's a whole lot of syncopations in this phrase, by the way, so we're rarely accenting strong beats. Okay, so now we're gonna reach up to C with our pinky, tie it over the bar line, play another C on the end of one, and then we're gonna play our fourth finger on B flat, tied to an eighth note, and on the end of three, we're gonna play this A. So as I mentioned, lots of syncopations. All right, next line down, we're gonna tie over to an eighth note, and then continue on with a few more eighth notes in stepwise motion. B flat, A, G, and then tie that over. Okay, now we rest, we get a little break here for a second in the next measure. We come right back in with A, B flat, C, A, F. And that's a whole note, so we'll hold it for the whole measure. Next measure we rest again, and we're gonna get our thumb ready to jump down to a B flat just underneath middle C but it's an eighth note, which means we're moving quickly off of it, back up to a high B flat, an octave above. And then a third finger plays G, we're gonna tie that over. Tie it over even into the next measure as well. And then we continue on, shifting our hand position up to put our two finger on A, a quick eighth note, and then another set of quarter note triplets. A, B flat, C, C in the next measure, D, D, C, B flat, rest. Now we're gonna do eighth notes, stepwise motion, downward again. C, B flat, A, next measure, keep going down to G. All right, we're on the fourth line down now. Tied to an eighth note, we wrap this measure up with an A eighth note. 
moving up to B flat and right back down to A in the next measure. More syncopations in this phrase coming up. We end this measure on the and of four with a B flat that's tied over to one eighth note, and we play another B flat on the and of one. So we are really dancing around the downbeat and the strong beats in these phrases. Tie this over to the rest of the measure, then we rest at the start of the next measure. We're going to put our fifth finger on B flat this time. We're going to play on beat two, tie it over to a set of quarter note triplets. We're not going to play the first one though, this one's extra tricky. We play the second and third, so we, we tie over on tri, and then we play pa let. Okay, so that measure again goes rest, two, tri, pa let. Okay, we finally end on a B flat whole note in the next measure. And this is really the hook of the song, right? That phrase we just did was rest, by endless love. Okay. Now, the remainder of the section is no longer the vocal melody. We're kind of going into a little riff pattern that we're going to see when we add the left hand, it's really going to make sense. But after this final line down first measure, we play this whole note B flat. After this, we now jump down to So that kind of just sounds like a random melody, right? But again, when we add the left hand, it's going to make sense. Check it out. Okay, so we'll get into that in just a sec. But for now, let's stay focused on just the right hand. And that's the majority of it right there. We covered it. The only thing we need to spend a little more time on, of course, is rhythm and timing. So to do that, what I want to do is bring in our backing track at the medium tempo. If you're playing in the Playground Sessions app, there's a convenient toolbar up top. And there's all sorts of tools and buttons you can push to help make learning a bit easier uh, and quicker. And what I'm going to do is click the medium tempo button. It's going to shift it down to an appropriate learning tempo. We're still going to have our backing track or our band playing along with us. So let's do that now. We're going to try the right hand at the slow tempo. And once we get 100% there, we'll move on to try it at the full speed. You guys ready? All right. One, two, set, go. One and two and three, tie it over, two and triple it, good. Tie it over, two and three and four and one and two and, lots of syncopations. Rest, two and three and four and one. Whole note, look ahead, we have a rest, Get your thumb down to B flat. Here we go. And four and tie it. Tie into the next measure. One and two and triple it. One and two and 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 one. Good. And four and one, two, three, four and one and three, four and one and. Again, syncopated. Rest. Two. Triple. One. Look ahead. We've got F. Two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one. Two and three. Four. All right. So, excuse my singing on that. Sorry to distract, but it really helps to count these rhythms out loud. And I hope that was beneficial for you guys at the slow speed. Please take advantage of these video lessons by pausing and rewinding and playing back with me in that same run through at the slow speed as many times as needed. But when you're ready, let's now try it at full speed and I won't sing or talk. We're on our own here. I'm just going to perform this for you at the full speed. So let's do it. One, two, set, go.
Hey, 100% for the right hand. Awesome work so far. Well, now I think we should just jump right into the left hand. What do you say? So, as you can see, we've got a handful of chords in this section, many of which are whole notes, but we also have some syncopations. I see some ties, some eighth notes, some dotted quarter notes, and at the very end, we can also see a bit of an arpeggio pattern. We see something more like this. Instead of block chords, right? Have no fear, I'm gonna walk you through each one of these out of context of any timing or tempo just yet. Then, once we're familiar with all the chord shapes and the hand positions we need to move to to execute them, then we'll try to do this in time. So, let's get started, one by one. Our first chord is E flat over B flat. Then we're gonna move up to an F over C. And in fact, the chord symbol says F7 over C, even though this triad is just an F major chord over C. And the reason for that is because in the right hand, we're actually going to be holding an E flat. The E flat is the seven of an F chord. So this technically, when you consider both hands, is an F7 over C. So our next chord is B flat over D. Lots of inversions in this. And here we see some syncopations. We're gonna tie to an eighth note. And then on the and of three, we're going to move to F over C again. When I say the and of three, I mean we're not on beat three, we're on the eighth note coming after beat three. So if we counted this measure, it would sound like this. One and two and three and four and. We play this F over C on the and of beat three. All right, then we move on to the next measure, G minor over D. This actually is very familiar, right? Because it's one note different from B flat over D. So this time we're playing G minor over D. Same rhythms in this measure. We're tying to an eighth note on beat three, and then F over C hits again on the and of three. So let's look at those two measures, measure three and four in the notation above. It looks like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, let's move on. Next line down is E flat major. Then we go to F major, and these are in root position now, not in second inversion like they were down here at the beginning. All right now they're root position, E flat, F. Still playing whole notes here, we're going to go to a B flat over D, and then the fourth chord of this line is a B flat 7. We're going to open up our hand position and play this chord here, the root, the third, and the flat 7. All right, next up we have an E flat over B flat again, just like we saw in our first measure of this section. Then we go to an F7 over E flat. This is a weird one. Now the next two measures, just like what we saw in measure three and four above, we have these chords with these certain syncopations. So we're gonna play again, one and two and three and four and one and two and three four and okay now we move on back to an E flat major in root position but instead of moving up to F this time we're gonna move down to a D minor in root position and then a C minor in root position and then we have another F7 over E flat but this time it's a little bit of a different voicing before we saw it as E flat F and A but this time we're gonna play E flat F and C And then, our final line down, we go to a B flat over D. We're gonna tie that to another measure of a whole note. And then our final two measures, we actually have a new idea here. We're gonna play a bit of a arpeggio pattern. So we're gonna play a B flat octave and a fifth, that's this here. And we're gonna play it one at a time. So root, fifth, high octave, hold it. Last measure, same thing, one and two and three and four. All right, I think it's time to try to play this. So I'm gonna cue up the backing track at the slow speed, and we're gonna give it a shot. You guys ready? One, two, set, go. All right, here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, good. Moving up.
Now get ready for a wide B flat seven. Good. Look ahead. E flat over B flat. F7 over E flat. Here comes those syncopations again. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and. Good. Now we're moving down. Here comes D minor. Down again to C minor. And our new F7 voicing. Here it comes. Look ahead. Good, tie it over. And get ready for the last two measures. Here we go. One and two and three. One more time. Great work, guys. As always, pause, rewind, play back as needed. But now let's go to full speed with this left hand. One, two, set, go. All right, 100% for the left as well, sweet. Well, we've got the right hand down, we've got the left hand down. Now we just need to put them together, right? Sounds easy, but this one's gonna be a little more involved than we might think. So we've got some work to do ahead of us still, but briefly I wanna pause and remind you guys that when we're done with this video, if you wanna finish this in the interactive app, you should, because we're doing a free trial right now for 30 days with no strings attached. You sign up today, you've got 30 days, as a full member in the app to try all the nooks and crannies of the app and really get an experience for what it's like. If you're loving it, then you could become a member, but you don't have to commit up front. It's 30 days to play. If you want to try your free trial now, click the link in this video's description or tap that card above that says, what are you waiting for? Tap it now and open it in a new tab so that when we're done with this video here on YouTube, you can go right into the app, start your free trial, no payment necessary and you can finish this song with interactive notation. You won't see me in a video lesson for every one of these songs, but you will have interactive notation for everything. And you've got three free song credits just for signing up as a bonus, which means you can go to the song store in the app, grab the interactive notation for this song, and grab a few more and give it a shot. All right, well, I hope you enjoy the app, but for now, let's keep going. We've got a little more work to do. We're gonna put these hands together for Endless Love. Let's do it. We're gonna start with the slow tempo, of course, but even at the slow speed, this one may be too tricky to jump right into hands together. So I'm gonna ask you guys to pause and really put the hands together out of any timing, all right? No context of rhythms or timing. I'll give you an example of what I mean. I want you to play something like this. Okay, beat one of measure one. Both hands play together, looks like this. And then I know that the left hand is holding out for the whole measure, so I can actually put my attention to the right hand while it finishes out this measure. So F, E flat. Okay, now looking ahead. The next measure, the left hand plays on the downbeat, but the right hand is holding over. So the left hand plays by itself in measure two. But now, since it's another whole note, we know it's gonna hold the rest of the measure, so the right hand picks up the attention now. We're gonna move on the right hand on its own up here. Okay, next measure they play at the same time again. So you see what I'm doing, right? I'm not worried about getting to the next beat or next measure in time just yet. First, I need to train my hands. When do they play at the same time? And when do they play at different times? Once you've paused this video and done that enough times to feel confident, then I want you to meet me back here for this slow tempo run through, which I'm gonna do now. Let's do it.
All right, we've got the slow tempo down with both hands. Now, final step, let's speed it up. Here we go. Hey, 100%, again. Man, that's awesome. It's pretty addicting when you're playing in the app to get these 100% scores popping up. It really makes you practice more than you even notice that you're practicing. You gotta beat your high score. You get a 98, you gotta get a 99. Get a 99, you gotta get a 100. If you were playing outside of the app and you played a 90% performance, you might say, hey, that was good enough, I'm gonna move on. But when you see that score pop up in the app, it gets you wanting to beat your score and get it perfect, right? Get it to 100. So I hope you guys check out the app and take advantage of that free trial. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next YouTube lesson tutorial. I'm Phil, thanks for watching. The features you saw on screen today can be at your fingertips with the Playground Sessions app. Co-created by music legend Quincy Jones, Playground teaches the piano with interactive feedback and gaming features, all while using your favorite songs. All right guys, I'm Phil. Hit subscribe so I can see you for the next video.